So we're here talking to Marge Kleiman. She's a photographer here in Brooklyn. She's currently going around and taking photos of people on their stoops. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your inspiration behind your series Stoop Stories? Sure, thank you so much for having me. Um, I just wanna mention that Dugal has been a uh, an important part of my life for a long time because my dad used to take film to be developed there like back in probably the 70s. Yes, yeah, so I just want to thank you so much for having me. Um, it's really nice to be able to share projects that are going on right now. There's a lot of really creative stuff in the ether um, during this lockdown. Um, yes, yeah, Stoop Stories was a project over 10 years ago. I used to video interview people on their stoops in my neighborhood talking about the old days um, in Borham Hill and Brownstone, Brooklyn. And the project kind of got shelved. And when this came up, I was seeing a lot of images on Instagram from the Front Steps project, um, which is this has grown to be this big movement of photographers. It started in Massachusetts, but now it's all over the world. Um, the Front Steps project was raising money um, for COVID relief efforts in exchange for a family portrait on the front steps from a social distance, a safe, safe social distance. So I thought this is a great time to bring Stoop Stories back. I was sort of inspired by it and I'm sort of part of their community, but it's different because I'm, I added the documentary piece back in. Um, so what I do is I, I do little interviews by email mostly um, since that's a safer way to go and ask them um, a central question, which is, how are you coping with COVID? Um, and then I do tend to dig deeper and ask a couple of other questions, um, but it's been really interesting hearing families and also individual stories about um, what they're dealing with, but also how they're coping with it. Um, it's been a really interesting range of responses. Amazing. Thank you. And so I know you grew up in Brooklyn and stoops are very integral to Brooklyn culture. Um, can you explain like what stoops mean to you and how they are very much like a Brooklyn staple? <laughs> yes, um, stoops really define community in Brooklyn um, and it's in every neighborhood. I mean, obviously in other cities as well. Um, but Stoop Life is a really big thing here. Um, one of my throwback Thursdays on Stoop Stories was um, me on my stoop at age two with my family in 1971. Okay, now you know my age. <laughs> um, but basically, I've been hanging out on this stoop. I'm still in the house that I grew up in, actually. I've been hanging out on my stoop, yes, for 50 years. I can say it, 50 years. Um, and having stoop sales and like, I mean, I... It, you name it, people do it on a stoop. One thing that has come up during COVID is people are playing music on their stoops. They're going out for the 7 p.m. claps on our stoops. Um, it's really a place for refuge. And one of the things I learned early on in this lockdown was I could sit on the top of the steps and someone could visit me on the bottom and it was like exactly six feet apart. So it was also part of what inspired me. Speaking of, what was your most inspiring stoop story? So that's a hard thing to answer because every story is, is interesting, actually, especially when you peel back the layers. But I actually found yesterday's stoop story to be really moving. Started with just a family portrait of a husband, wife, and two kids and their dog in Brooklyn Heights. But when, I, when we peeled back the layers, basically, she's a public defender who's been working tirelessly to get her clients out of prison who are sitting there. Uh, in many cases, they're they've been wrongly uh, convicted or they're awaiting trial. They haven't even been proven guilty. They're, they haven't even been indicted um, in great danger because the rates of COVID are so high at Rikers. And so she's been working with um, nonprofits to get them out. And, uh, and her husband is also like head of communications for the Port Authority. So they're both major essential workers and they're trying to raise their two kids and homeschool them at the same time. So everybody's juggling a lot, you know, Everyday families are juggling a lot, but essential workers especially um, have, you know, are facing major challenges. And on the other hand, um, they all do it with a great deal of resilience from what I've observed. There was a nurse uh, a few days ago who lives in my neighborhood 
and she's an ER nurse and she's seen, you know, it all, but she's so positive and upbeat and has this gorgeous makeup. And she's like, my makeup is my art therapy. <laughs> so people are just finding ways to be resilient. And it's kind of amazing. How did you get into photography? Oh gosh. Um, I've always... I've always been really into photography since I was a kid. I remember having this really thin 110 Instamatic Kodak. I, I've experienced a lot of loss in my life and I think photography has helped me hold on to moments. But I got more into it uh, over the years. I had been doing children's media, um, producing educational children's media and I was just drawn more and more to photography as a visual storytelling tool. So is that why children seem to play an important role in some of your series? Or is there another reason? Yeah, I think it's a big part of it. I mean, I've always been um, really passionate about supporting kids and families. So I realized that while I was doing this project a few weeks in, there, was, there were themes emerging around resilience and also and how kids are coping. So because the interviews were with parents, um, you know, I wasn't interviewing kids directly, but I was seeing them play. So kids were on the stoop, even for a five minute shoot. They were like, you know, they had their stuffed animals and I asked them what, what would you like to do? And they threw the stuffed animals in the air and we got a picture of that. Or we got kids jumping off their stoops or different things. You know, I tried to let them really lead the, take agency and lead the shoot. And play is really how kids cope. And so I've started to ask parents more and more now, how, what are you noticing uh, in terms of behavioral shifts with your kids and what coping mechanisms are they using? Yeah, it's really nice. It's good to see them like engaging with art as well. Yeah. Um, so as this series came about because of COVID, um, how has COVID affected you and your work? Um, the Stoop stories have allowed me to engage with people. So I go out on my shoots and I'll, even if I just have three shoots, I'll chat with them a little bit you know, safe distance, but, um, and lately I've actually been able, I've been stopping and talking to people in their natural habitats on their stoops without having, you know, made an appointment in advance, just really more documentary. And that's really been lovely too, because I want to make sure I'm getting a good cross section of the population. Um, How do you keep inspired? And do you have any tips for other artists out there who are struggling to like keep sane? <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, meditation has been a huge aspect of my life. Um, I just, I notice a huge difference when I sit uh, and meditate, even just 10 minutes um, on days that I do versus days that I don't. It's a huge difference. And this is something I'm constantly working on. They call it a practice because it's, yeah, it's a con it's a lifelong practice and it doesn't have to be perfect. So I highly recommend that, whatever feels right, you know. Um, intuitively is is what we're meant to be you know doing so that's my what's my tips <laughs> for the day <laughs> yeah and we're all so hard on ourselves right so we need to be more compassionate and gentle with ourselves and like know that it's hard it's all it's a struggle for all of us COVID or not it's <laughs> <laughs> no I, I have nothing else to add that's just like spot on <laughs> beautiful um yeah I, I know that you have some like past connection with Dugal if you want to like bridge into that like really briefly <laughs> sure I mean uh my dad passed away just over a year ago and I was looking through some of his work and he has slides of some of his sculpture that he made and they all say Dugal on them and that means a lot to me I didn't even realize that he had taken these, he must have taken his sculptures to De Gaulle and set them up professionally and had them photographed. I didn't realize. And the sculptures are made of Sculpey. I'm getting a little teary. They're made of Sculpey, so they're temporary. They're, they can crumble really easily. And so we have these slides to, to keep um, historical evidence that these sculptures existed, I guess. But also, my, I think, yeah, I mean, my family, we always went to De Gaulle to develop film when it was film and digital as well um, in Soho when it was still in Soho and then in Chelsea and so it's been in my I guess it's yeah it's been in the in my cosmos for a long time 
definitely a New York institution in the photo world at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Danielle, was there anything else? Yeah, I, you know, just wanted to thank you so much for sp taking some time to chat with us. So we're offering um, uh, your essential workers and people that are helping out with the COVID crisis completely free prints. And That's very, very generous. Thank you so much. Oh. So thank you. Thank, thank you for being you. Awesome. That was amazing. That was like Oprah saying, you get an iPad. You get an iPad. <laughs> I'm really teary now. Oh, thank you so much, you guys. Awesome. That was really thank fun. You. It yeah. was really and fun. Yeah, you guys are so much fun. <laughs> you too. Uh, you too. You it was lovely to meet you so much. much. Yeah, and add me on Instagram too. I